Welcome to Automotive Basic Knowledge and our topic for today is about inductive and hall effect RPM the sensors explained. In this discussion we covered Introduction of inductive and hall effect RPM sensors Inductive sensor operating principles and specification Hall effect sensor operating principles and specification Inductive sensor diagnostics and testing procedures Hall effect sensor diagnostics and testing procedures. Test can be used. Introduction of inductive and hall effect RPM sensors. Inductive and hall effect RPM the sensors in today's vehicles mainly are used for measuring the RPM and determining the position of crankshaft or camshaft at engine management systems, as well as measuring the speed, RPM, of the wheels at ABS systems, ESP systems, etc. The RPM the sensors typically can be hall or inductive type. The operation of these sensors is fundamentally similar in all instances, although the construction can vary depending on the type of sensor, its intended use or manufacturer application. Inductive sensor operating principles and specification. 1 sensor housing. 2 output signal wires. 3 coaxial coated protection. 4 permanent magnet. 5 inductive coil 6 pole pin 7 trigger wheel G air gap The inductive sensor, also known as magnetic pickup sensor, during the operational work, as a result of inductive effect, in the sensor's coil is producing the oscillating voltage, that is one kind of sinusoidal waveform signal. When the trigger wheel with the teeth passes in enough close distance, G, to the pole pin of the sensor, the magnetic field surrounding the coil is changed. As the result of the magnetic field changes, in the coil a voltage is induced, which is proportional to the strength and rate of change of the magnetic field. One complete oscillation is produced for each tooth that passes beside to the sensor pole pin. Figure 1 shows the basic integral components and the shape of the generated signal of an inductive sensor. Depending upon the manufacturer application and type of the sensor, the electrical resistance of the coil is typically in the range between 500 ohms and 1.500 ohms. In some extreme cases, the lowest value can be about 200 ohms, as well as in some cases, the highest value can be up to 2.500 ohms. The voltage signal produced by the sensor depends on the speed of the trigger wheel and the number of turns in the coil. So an output voltage could be expected between 1 volt and 2 volts during the engine cranking for example, but in cases at higher RPM, can expect it more. The output voltage signal produced by the sensor is weak, that is low energy level, so could easily be degraded by other external stronger signals, such as the ignition system for example. For that reason, to eliminate the external influences, the signal wires from the sensor to the control unit are usually shielded with a coaxial coated wires type of protection. Hall effect sensor operating principles and specification. Unlike inductive sensors, the output signal from a Hall effect sensor is not affected by the rate of change of the magnetic field. The produced output voltage typically is in the range of millivolts and is additionally amplified by integrated electronics fitted inside of the sensor housing. Figure 2 shows a typical build of a Hall effect sensor. The final output voltage signal usually is in digital waveform pulses. The output signal of the sensor can be either positive or negative with peak voltage usually up to 5 volts or 12 volts, depending upon the type of the integrated electronics and requirements of the used system. The amplitude of the output signal remains constant, only the frequency increases proportionally with RPM. Unlike inductive sensors which generate a voltage signal by itself, the Hall effect sensors must be additionally supplied by external voltage needed for integrated electronics. The usual supply in voltage is mainly 5 volts but in some cases can be 12 volts. Inductive sensor diagnostics and testing procedures. Unplug the sensor and check that the electrical resistance of the inductive coil is roughly between 500 ohms and 1.500 ohms. If the reading value is drastically different, including zero or infinite, replace the sensor. Note, in some extreme cases, 
the lowest resistance can be about 200 ohms, as well as in some cases, the highest resistance can be up to 2.500 ohms. Check the size of the air gap, G, between the sensor and the trigger wheel, the value should be, G 0.8 to 1.5 millimeters, 0.03 to 0.06 inch. Check the cleanliness of the sensor pin, sometimes may have cumulated metal turnings. Check the continuity and condition of the wires, connectors, terminals and the condition of the shielding. Unplug the sensor and check that there is an output AC voltage when cranking the engine, for engine RPM sensors, or when a wheel is rotated, for ABS wheel sensors. The output voltage signal could be expected between 1 volt and 2 volts, AC voltage during the engine cranking for example, but in cases at higher RPM, can expect it more. Also, this operation can be performed and when the connector of the sensor is plugged in. Hall Effect Sensor Diagnostics and Testing Procedures Check the power supply to the sensor. The usual supply and voltage is 5 volts, in some cases can be 12 volts. Check the size of the air gap, G between the sensor and the trigger wheel, the value should be, G0.8 to 1.5 mm, 0.03 to 0.06 inch. Check the continuity and condition of the wires, connectors and terminals. Check the cleanliness of the sensor pin, sometimes may have cumulated metal turnings. Check that there is an output signal when cranking the engine, for engine RPM sensors, or when a wheel is rotated for ABS wheel sensors. Note, unlike inductive sensors, at hall sensors the connector must be plugged in, because is needed power supply for integrated electronic components, which are inside of the sensor. Testing can be used. For testing can be used, test LED lamp, electrical multimeter or oscilloscope. When is used test LED lamp, during the engine cranking, the LED should fast blinking according to the engine RPM but in cases at higher RPM, the blinking is difficult to be follow. Then it's better to use multimeter or oscilloscope for check the frequency as well as voltage of the signal. Important advice, when testing the signal of a sensor, never use a test lamp with tungsten filament, may cause an extra current overload and produce damage of the sensor. It is recommended always to use some of the more sensitive tools, like test lamp with LED light or electrical multimeter for example. If you enjoying reading and watching of this video, click the like button or provide your comment below. Thank you.